Hello and welcome, Steven here. And today we're gonna to be going over a simple wait notify data flow. And I call it simple because, well, there's a lot of different ways you can utilize the wait and notify processors to trigger when to release things. And this one's gonna be a pretty simple example of it. All right, so here's what the final product's gonna look like when we get done. And what we're gonna be doing for this one is moving data from a source table in MySQL where I've shoved a whole bunch of example data in there, some demo data. And then we're gonna be pulling it out of there and inserting it at the end into a Cassandra table. Now we're just not gonna put it into one table, we're gonna put it into multiple tables. In this case, three different tables. So before we get started, let's go ahead and back out here, go to our clean start, and let's jump on over to dBeaver so we can take a look at our data. So over here in dBeaver, we have our test data table. And that's this one right here. We'll take a look at the example. So we have a couple columns in here. And more importantly, what we're gonna be working with the most is the, the host name field. So as you can see, these are from the three different NiFi hosts in my cluster up here. And we're gonna be taking the data and taking it out of this table and putting it in three separate tables, all type, uh, all tables are gonna be named after their host name. And that's how we're gonna build these tables. So that way each table can be comprised only of the data that was generated by that host. All right, so let's go ahead and, and it's not a lot just because of the example, we want it to kind of flow and get through the data quickly. So there's about, three or there is 304,000 records in there that we're gonna be taking out and putting into a uh, Cassandra tables. So somewhere around 100,000 per host is what we're probably looking at. All right, let's go ahead and jump back over and get our get started on this. So the first thing we need is we need to be able to get that data out of my SQL. So we need a processor and we're gonna use the execute SQL record. Let's go ahead and get this one configured. And the first thing is give it a name, query host names. And we're not going to be playing with the failure today. We'll just terminate that for this example. We only need to run on the primary, otherwise we'd get duplicates. And I just want it to run once every hour because we only need it one time. Set up our connection. We're going to utilize the MySQL connection I have already had set up for a while. And we're gonna use a record writer. This is gonna be a JSON record set writer. Uh, and it's my basic one that I've set up at the root level, my NiFi canvas, and I've had for a while as well. So this one's just a basic writer and it strips them from arrays and keeps them in individual rows. All right, so that's set up correctly. And then the next thing I wanna do is put my query in there. And this query is gonna be pretty simple. All we need to do is get a list of the host names that we're working with, and maybe I don't know them. So the easiest way is just to do a quick query where we select distinct host names, and this should give us our three different host names. We'll take that, that's ready. So the next part I wanna do is once I have those host names, I want to split them into three different flow files, from one flow file to three. In order to do that, I'm going to be utilizing the split record in this case. And the reason is because I've already, my record set writer is already writing the JSON to individual lines. So I just need to split on the new lines. That's why I'm not using the JSON version of this. And we're going to be using my JSON tree writer basic which is basically infers the schema, doesn't do anything else. And we're gonna use that same writer. We're gonna do one split per, and that's all there is to set up this one. Nothing needs to change here. And uh, let's see, split record. Yeah, we'll just leave that. That's actually exactly what we need. There we go, terminate those. So now that one's set up too. We're good here as well. Now, Someone's probably asking themselves, well, why don't I just write these out into individual flow files? 
So when I when it comes to max rows per line, I could have just put a one here and skip this entire step. Well, the reason being is, let's go ahead and run this real quick. So we kind of look at the flow file we just generated and we take a peek at its attributes. We can see we have an attribute for file name here that was created when this flow file was created. It's got a unique UUID for its name. And we're gonna be utilizing this for our trigger on our await notify. And in order to make it work the way I want it to work, I need all three flow files to have the exact same file name. So in order to do that, I'm querying, I'm doing the query, putting them all three host names into the one. So we take a look here and look at the content real quick. We can see three, three rows, uh, host name, and then the host name itself. And then we're gonna split these out. So after the split, the next thing we wanna do is write the host names to an attrib uh, attributes because we need to utilize that. So we want a evaluate JSON path. We're gonna use the splits. Clean those up a little bit. And we are writing this to attribute. We're gonna create this. We're gonna call it source host name. And this is gonna be host name. There we go. So that will write, create the attribute for us. And we're gonna say host name Post name to attribute. There we go. No failure, no match, unmatches we're working with. Now that one's set up too. So if we go ahead and run this through, we get three now. We can inspect those. Take a look at the, f now if we take a look here, uh, we can see each one has the same file name even though they each had their own unique UUIDs for their flow files, but they each had the same file name for their uh, attribute. So that's exactly what we're gonna be using and that's what we want. All right, next part. From here, we need to, we're gonna utilize a route on attribute. We're going to create that relationship on the match. And what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna route one to drop create float. And we'll see if that is in a minute. And all we need to do in here is create an expression that we're gonna be using And we are gonna add that one in here. We're gonna say this is our drop flow. And here's the expression. So what we're doing here is on the source host name, we want a flow file that equals a very specific host name in this case. And this is the host, this is one of our hosts that we're utilizing. So I can go ahead and say, okay apply and that one's done now we're going to work on the side where we drop tables so what we're going to be doing is i'm going to assume this is a process that i have that runs every day and it goes to a source table gets the current information or the host names for all the records regs them to their own individual tables for some other purpose we're going to have and uh, maybe this process requires that the tables are dropped every day and repopulated with the current day's information instead of like updating the table, which is another option. Well, depend on your, depend on the needs and scenario that you're working with. Uh, but in this case, because it works for creating a flow that we can show an example of how to use a wait notify, we're just going to drop tables and recreate them. All right. So in order to do the next part, we need a Query Cassandra 
And we're going to be using this one a little, quite a bit over here. So we take this, we route it, and we only want the drop flow. That gets us one going this direction. And the next thing we're going to use as a weight, that's going to be on this side. And the weight, we want to make sure it gets all of the flow files, so we want both relationships going to it. We can go ahead and set this up to clean it up a little bit. All right. That's good. That's good enough. All right, so let's finish this side. First thing we want to do is create our first one. So we saw back over here, we have three hosts. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the file again. So here's our first host. And then our second one right here and our third. And if you're not familiar, remember I'm using a Docker set up for my Apache NiFi host cluster. So that's why we're seeing the host names for all the containers as the host. All right, so let's go ahead and set up the first one. So what we need to do is drop, we need to drop a table if it exists for all three tables and then recreate them as well. So that's what we're gonna set up first. So the first one here, we're gonna give it a name and it's gonna to be to drop our first table. We just say drop. We're gonna have our name, our key space is called JRNL for journal. And we're gonna go ahead and just drop that table. So this is basically, we're gonna rinse and repeat this three times. All right, so scheduling right away. Select our Cassandra session provider. Our key space is going to be the table name. Oops, not the drop part. We don't need to set up user password. It's already done. Consistency. So what we're going to do here is I know that this key space has a replication factor of three. And what I want to do is make sure that all of them respond back with the drop. And so I know that it's been dropped everywhere. All right, so it does add a little bit more time to get that done, but that's how I want to set it up. And then the query we're going to be using itself is going to be, where is it? Oh, there it is. There's a query. So a drop table, if it exists, drop that table. Okay, so we're done there. Now we have the... Uh, actually, it shouldn't matter for this one, but we're going to just change it to JSON anyways. Uh, and then I think we're good here. So done, done, all. Yep, look, all looks good to me. Okay, didn't see anything that I was missing. No failure. Uh, success, yes. Retries, yep, we'll go ahead and just route that to itself. All right, so that's set up. And we're gonna do this again. So just copy it so we don't have to redo as much. Take the success. Get that out of the way. There's our retry. Okay, so in this case, now we're gonna be changing it up and this is gonna be our create. And that takes care of that part. And then what we need now is the query for creating our table. So no change here, no change here. And we are changing the query. Here's what our query looks like. So we're gonna create table 320 and we're gonna create a date, host name, UUID, count, thread, and primary key. Primary key is gonna be on UUID, gives us our partition key. And we're done. So here's our create statement. All right, so that looks good to me. I don't think I'm missing anything. 
And now what we need to do is create two more versions of this. So go ahead and just select all this, paste it once. Copy again and paste it again. Now we can just start joining things together here. So we take that full file success. We're going to push it down to the next one so it becomes the next trigger. There we go. And now all we need to do is just rename our stuff and change the table names. Make sure I'm on the right one. There it is, that one. All right, so rename it. Here's the second host. There we go. Everything looks good there. Next one. And the table structures are all the same. So all we have to do is just change out the name. So that takes care of that one. Next part. Take the success over here. Go ahead and clean it up a little bit. And the next one is our last host name. Let me grab that. And here it is. So we can go ahead and finish setting this up. And I actually do have ex uh, examples in my production environments where I do need to create tables that are just created every day with fresh data. Where it's a waste, it's actually faster to just drop the table, recreate them real quick, uh, than it is to say like an MS SQL table to do a merge and wait for the merge to run and process through. Uh, it's easier sometimes to just create second table or create temp tables of those that data and then as soon as I'm ready to replace the old data, I just drop the old table, rename the new table, and then it'll be all done. I don't think I gave my name. Okay, that's done. That's done. This one is updated. Good there. I don't did I do it all right there. If yep, I did rename it, 2A3, 2A3, I think we're good. Okay, so 320, 2 delta 8, 2 alpha 3. All right, that gives us our three that we're looking for. So now we have flow where we drop our record, we drop the tables and recreate the tables inside of Cassandra. Uh, okay, so this part's done. We're 18 minutes in, so this will be the end of this video. In the next video, we'll go ahead and Finish the other half of our flow, set up our wait and notify as well. And that should complete this example we're working on. So I'll catch you in the next video.